Somebody's life will be changed yes. forever. Somebody yes, God. will be encouraged. A person will just know yes. I'm alone. God, I need you to mold well, and shape well. yes, God. how you choose to today. God, fill me. Yes, I cannot God. be filled unless you do it, oh yes. God. And once you feel me, God, I want you to use me. Yes. God, yes, until God. you are satisfied. God, yes. speak through me. Yes, God. In this place, oh God, yes, God, that we will have an encounter with you yes. that we've never had before. God, I give you the praise all in God. We give it to you, Father. For it's in Jesus' name yes. that I pray. Yes. Let the redeem of the Lord say amen. 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 And amen. Amen. And if you have your weapons with you, I pray you do. I need you to go to bed and hear your Psalms. Psalms 23. One which we were taught when we were children. One of the first scriptures that I learned was Psalms 23. And didn't necessarily understand why we were being taught that at a young age. But as I've grown older, I realized Psalms 23 is a song that we should probably read every single day. Come on. To remind us who God is. Yeah. Amen. 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 I know I can recite it, but I'm going to read it. Come on. All right. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have what I need. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He renews my life. He leads me along the paths for his name's sake. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger. For you are with me. Yes. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be unto God. Amen. 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 The Lord sent me just for a little while just to encourage all of you, especially the clergy, during this time. After going through three quarters of the year, being hit, knocked down, slapped, talked about, belittled, maybe possibly encouraged, I don't know. <laughs> it's been a long year. But it ain't over until God says it's over. Right. And so if I had to pin a text, a topic to this text, it would just be, God is. All right. All right. I need you to look to your neighbor and just yeah. tell him, God is. God is. God is. God is. God is. 
David, all of us are familiar with David. David was the apple of God's eye. He was the apple of God's eye because David knew how to get in the presence of Almighty God. Yeah. Even though David had some faults, you know, he had some flaws. He did some things that were not of God some of the time. But when he messed up, David yes. knew how to go back to God yes. and ask him to forgive him. Come David on. understood the importance of having the covering of Almighty God. So before we can do anything, we have to realize that we are not perfect. Amen. <laughs> and I think sometimes those who are not of clergy need to understand and hear that clergy people are yeah. not perfect. Right. That God called the imperfect people to a perfect work and through the work he perfects us to deliver the word. Am I right about it? Yeah. I come to encourage those of you who preach the gospel today to realize that even though you go through hell and high water you have to remind yourself that God is. David in some of the songs and really a lot of the songs David would complain and murmur a lot of the times of the song but David understood that it was God who brought him through the trials and tribulations that he had been through and he realized that if I can do anything in this life I can depend and trust in God. Yeah. So he took a moment to pen Psalm 23 so he had to not only encourage himself but it was also a word that will encourage those who will come after him. David realized that people would talk about him. David realized that people would scandalize his name. David realized that there were going to be ditches. David realized that there were going to be valleys. But he also realized that the Lord, his shepherd, would take care of him. Yeah. So today we want to talk about God is, but you first have to remember that God is our shepherd. Yeah. In other words, that God is notorious for going to leave the 100 and going to find that one. There may be some of you in here today who are frustrated, who are ready to throw in the towel and give up because the enemy has come into your life like a mighty Russian flood. But you have to realize that the shepherd our God is concerned about you. There is somebody in the house today who came discouraged, but I want to remind you that the Lord is your shepherd and that you shouldn't have to want for anything. you need. God said, I am your shepherd. I will cover you when nobody else will pray for you. God said, I will intercede for you when nobody yeah. else will intercede yeah. for you. Somebody needs to understand that God is a present help yeah. in the time yeah. of trouble. A shepherd is one who will tend the flock. And I want you to understand that a shepherd will tend the flock even if they stink. Now, the shepherd doesn't always like what the flock does, but he realizes, or she realizes that, that he has to take care of them because he is the one who created them. Sometimes we will allow the world to get us so down that we will forget that God is perfect in every single thing that he does. And when he calls you to a work, he's going to bring you through the work. Glory to God. And while you are out in the pasture, God says, I will take care of you even if you have some dog on you. God said, I will take care of you even if you mix it and mess it around with some stuff that you don't need to be mixing around with because I'll bring you back to where you need to be. Yeah. The Lord is my shepherd. He said, you should not have any need. On this walk of life as a clergy person or as a man and woman of God, there are going to be some times when you feel like you don't have what you need. But God says, I will provide every single on, thing every. that you yeah. need. Do you not remember when your back was against the wall and it seemed like everybody had given up on you, even the doctor had given up on you, and sometimes your family and your friends had turned their backs on you? But just when you were about ready to give up and throw in the towel, God stepped right in on time. Have you ever been in that place to say that God is? God is. God is. In the midst of your trials and tribulations and your problems, your hurts, your pain, when people are not encouraging you and pushing you, you have to realize that God will protect you. He will take you to a place where other people cannot go. He will take you specifically by yourself and allow you to go in a place called the green pastures, a, a place of rest, a place of peace, a place where he can encourage you and push you. And the truth of the matter, you've got to learn how to encourage yourself. Because when it is what I know in the age, me 
in church, when we're read in, when they bring us in, the one thing the bishop asks us, he asks us if you will go, when you go by yourself. Yeah. And we will tell the Lord, God, if I have to go, I'll go by myself. Yeah. But as soon as you out there on the Isle of Patmos by yourself, you start murmuring, complaining, and acting really bold and wondering why people are not following you. But God said, there are some places that some folk can't go with you. Yeah. He said, that's why I need to put you over here in the green pastures. I need to put you in a place of rest so I can minister to your spirit, so I can minister to your soul. Because this world is, is a bad place. And this world will eat you up alive and spit you out. That's why you got to go and be quiet with me. Jesus said, I'm not asking or telling you to do something that I didn't do. Every single time that Jesus went out to minister and laid hands on the sick and watched them recover, every time he cast out demons, he would walk away for a little while. He would go to a separate place where he could pray so he could get refilled by the Father. how many people tell you amen when you preach? Uh -huh. I don't care how many folks that they enjoyed that sermon, the same amount they're saying they, they enjoyed it, they, 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 they're also talking about what you say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So you're going to need them great pastors. Mm -hmm. And you have to encourage yourself and tell the Lord that he is. Not only does he lie you beside the green pastures, he will also give you some quiet words. He will give you some times where it is you don't have to say anything. He will allow the things around you to minister to you. And right about it, I have learned to, to, to learn to appreciate nature. I'm learning to go out and just look how good God is. Sometimes we get caught up in the hustle and bustle of life. Get on these jobs and think that's every single thing that we need, but no, God will provide every Every single thing that we need, the peace that we need comes from God. And I've learned just to walk outside and look to the hills for which yeah. comes my help. I understand that all of my help comes from God. Yes, sometimes this road may get lonely. Yes, sometimes I want to see somebody walking with me. Yes, I want somebody to give me an encouraging word. But I understand that I can do all things through Christ who gives me David had to remind them, he said, even though I messed up, the Lord is my shepherd. He's given me a place that I don't have to want for anything. He gave me a place where I can go and have some peace. Y'all, there's nothing like the peace of God. And once you've had it and lost it, and you get it back, you will do whatever it takes not to lose it again. Do I have any witnesses in the house that you've ever lost your peace? And God gives it back. You'll do whatever you need to do to protect it. And that's what God wants you to do. So in other words, if that's some folks you got to put out of your life, you got to put them out of there. If that's some place you don't need to go that's disturbing your peace, stop going there because your peace matters. And then you look Jesus. Every church ain't for you. I am learning on this walk of ministry that just because you invite it don't mean you're supposed to go. Because sometimes people don't invite you for the right reasons. Sometimes people invite you just to trap you. Y'all will get down the way home. <laughs> I'm saying that to be careful where you go. Amen. Be careful where you put your feet because your feet are beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the enemy will do whatever he can to try to trip you up. That was a commercial break. Now back, it says, now as he lets you stay by the quiet waters, he will give you new life. And he will lead your path of righteousness. For well, his name's sake. Yeah. There may be times that you want to uh, go to the left, but God says, no, I've chosen you to go to the right. He said, even my son David, David knew that he was called for my perfect will, but still he had the flesh he had to wrestle with. Mm. But God said, when you wrestle with the flesh, know that the spirit is there to keep you on the right track. But you have to be willing to keep saying that God is. God is. God is. God is. Yes. Can I tell you that God allows you to go a path these right these paths of righteousness is for his name's sake. God does not do it for your glory. God does it for his glory. Anything that God allows to happen in your life, he does it for the glorification of the Father who is in heaven. And you have to realize this thing called ministry is not about you. God did not call 
call you to call you who you are. He calls you for what you've been through and whom you can minister to. Sometimes people think they're called because of the family they came from. Sometimes people think they're called because of their education. But God says, no, I need people whom I can use. I need people whom, who have gone through some stuff and who was willing to tell the story. Am I right about it? I used to get so frustrated with God because I felt like every time I turned around, I was always going through something. Do I have any witnesses in the house that if I go to the right, there was hell over there. If I went to the left, there was hell over there. I go to my home, there was hell there. If I went to the job, there was hell there. I went to the community, there was hell there. I said, Lord, how much longer will I have to go through? God said, I need you to go through because you can't mess to my people if you haven't been nowhere. shall be no light. God said, I am there with you. Yes. God said, I will not leave you, nor would I forsake you. He said, I'm always there with you. There are some dark places. These past two and a half years have been dark for all of us, whether we admit it or not. Yes. When this pandemic came, it yes. came into this world, but it was also, as I told you before, to bring the church back in right relationship yes. with him, because we had gotten off track. We had gotten off kill. The church was not praying the way they were supposed to pray. They weren't laying hands on the sick to recover. They weren't going to the being missionaries. They weren't going to the community. They weren't telling the way to see the death and the gift of God is eternal life. God said, I'm tired of my church not being obedient, so I've got to allow some darkness to come over the land so then they can receive the light. Amen. Y'all know I'm right about it. Amen. Some of y'all ain't praying as much as y'all have these past two and a half years. <laughs> and then we can't. <laughs> y'all know I'm right. <laughs> it wrapped up my prayer life. <laughs> it wrapped up my reading. Because right. I thought it was the end of the world. I said, Lord, this is the end of the world. <laughs> my Lord. God said, even though things look rough and hard and trying and frustrating, he said, you're not there by yourself. He said, do you not remember Noah? He said, do you remember Noah? I told Noah to preach a word to folk who wouldn't even listen to it. He said, I let him preach the word that a flood was going to come. And Noah preached the word in and out of season. And then when the flood came, that's when everybody wanted to get on board. I, I said that to say, ministers uh, of God, that you have to realize there will be some times you're going to preach a message. You're going to give a word. And folk not going to pay you no attention to that. But you are charged with preaching in season and out of season, regardless of if they receive it or if they don't receive it. You do what God told you to do. And I promise you, he'll pierce somebody's heart. It may not happen the day that you preach it, but it will happen. Because the day that the water came, everybody wanted to come to Noah to get on board. But can I tell you, that's not how it's going to happen. That when it's your season and it's your time, God will put those people in your life when it's supposed to happen. Right. He said the darkest balance will be the thing you think is going to take you out. But God says it's not going to happen. Right. The depression is not going to happen. He said the sickness, he said it's not going to happen. He said I will take care of you. He said, and though I, you walk through the darkest places, he said, you don't have to fear the danger. He said, why? Because I'm with you. Yeah. Have you ever been in a place in your life and it, you felt better about it because somebody was with you? Yeah. I know how I felt. There were times when I was afraid to go in school. I was afraid to, to go in my class. I was very timid when I was young because kids used to pick on me all the time. Either I was too skinny or my hair was a certain way or I was in the right complexion. And I was picked on all the time. And I hated 
going to school. So my comfort was my sister. My older sister would go to school with me and let me know that it all would be well. And whenever I would feel bad, she would come and get me. Even though she knew I was not sick, she would come and see about me. Y'all, that is how God is. Even though he knows that we can handle it, he will remind us you're not going to this thing by yourself. So I want to encourage you today that regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what it feels like, regardless of even what they are saying, you've got to press on and keep saying, God is. The danger will come. He said, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. In other words, the weapon is going to be formed. The weapon is going to happen. But he's saying that it's not going to prosper. It's not going to be able to take you out. I know you think that it's about over, but God said, no, it's not over. He said it was formed to distract you. It was formed yeah. to really and truly to get you back on track. Do you remember Paul? Paul complained and frustrated and upset because he had thorn in his flesh. He was up asking God to remove that thing. He asked him three times, God, would you please remove this thorn? And God told him, my grace is sufficient enough. God allowed the thorn. He allows the weapon. He allows the dark times to keep us on track. He allows your back to get against the wall because he wants to see what you made of. Am I right about that? He said, you don't have to worry about it, Paul. He said, did I bring you through prison? Did I bring you through the shipwreck? He said, if I brought you through all things, I will bring you through this. Why? Because God is. God is. God is. Yes, he is. He'll bring you through the darkest valleys of your life. He remembers and reminds us that he is the, the rod. And his staff, they will comfort us. They will protect us. He lets us know that even though we go through those hard times in our lives, even though that we're ready to give in the towel, he said, I will anoint your head with oil. He said, and your cup shall run it over. Amen. So you have to realize, men and women of God, when you have been called to preach, God has already anointed you to yeah. do that. Amen. You don't have to explain to anybody your calling. You don't have to tell nobody what you call for. You just get up what God has told you to do. Sometimes we get in trouble because we talk too much. Okay. I'm learning. I don't have to explain to folk. Amen. God called me. That's right. If you got a problem with it, deal with God. Am I right? Amen. Amen. <laughs> so God anoints you for the job. He anoints you for the call. He anoints you for this season. Then use the gift. I heard one of the members say that you started, Sister um, Tompkins, you, you, we started the, the women's ministry. And that's what it's about. You you have to find what your niche is, what your knack is, and that's you right. do it in the ministry. God has anointed you for that. And he said, only the faithful love will pursue those of us who truly love God. And if you love God, there ought to be some sign. I think the mother said this morning, love is an action word. Don't tell me you love me. And when I walk in the room, you don't even open your mouth. Don't tell me you love me and there's no sign of it. Am I right about it? If you love me, you ought to act. Love you ought to kiss me sometime, you ought to hold me sometime, you ought to encourage me sometime, you ought to push me sometime. No, that's what it's about in the ministry. Our clergy needs that. They need to know that we love them and that we appreciate the work that they're doing. Because when y'all are asleep, they are praying. Am I right about it? Because if when y'all are asleep, they're somewhere on their knees calling out the Lord God, please deliver right now in the name of Jesus. to 
love him and pursue him. And he said, in all the days of your life, you will dwell in the house of God. All so right. if you do all the things that you've been called to do that he's asked you to do, you will be able to dwell with him when it's all said and done. Right. Jesus said, Chris, I still don't think they have it. He said, do you understand who I am? He said, my name is Jesus. And he said, I'm Jesus. I'm the one that when God said, if somebody would go, he said, I raised my hand and said, here I am, Lord, send me. Jesus said, I got in a coat of flesh. I put it on and I allowed myself to be born through a virgin Mary. He said, and when Mary had me, before she had me, she tried to take me to an end so she could deliver me. But they didn't want me in the end. Can I tell you all that sometimes people will not allow you to come in places because they are intimidated by your gifts. They are intimidated by your calling. They are intimidated by the things that are on your life. But don't be concerned about folks not letting you in because God said, I have a place prepared for you. So Mary went out under the stars, the sun, and the moon and gave birth to Jesus.
we miss opportunities in life to let people know just how good God is. We don't have to wait until we come to the house of worship. God gives us opportunity on our jobs. He gives us opportunity with our family members. He gives us opportunity in the grocery store, on the street. God has given me so many opportunities to, to miss that. Y'all, I missed it. And so that's what I want to share. I, I learned from my mistakes. Because I see on my job, they don't want me talking about God. All right. So it's a separation, you know, church and state. <laughs> but I realized that that, that that job that I have, God allowed me to get it. Yeah. Yeah. And when he allowed me to get it, he knew that I was a preacher. All right. And he knew that he would protect me while I was there. Yeah. And so I had to remove the restraints. And just do what God led me to do while I was working. He, he allowed me to minister to veterans. He allowed me to minister to veterans' families. And sometimes even the people on the phone when I'm trying to get help for the veteran. All right. God has a way of, of doing things. Yes, he does. And so I don't want to miss this opportunity. That if you're here today and you don't know Christ as your personal Savior. I'm not talking about that you heard mom talk about him or you were in church and you felt uh, people and saw people moving going around talking about what is your experience with God. Do you know him as your personal Savior? Do you know him as your friend, uh, the pardon of your sins? Do you know him? Lord. Let me pose it this way. If Jesus was to walk in now and just start touching your people this time, come on. Would you be ready? One thing I, I don't want is for your blood to be on my hands. Let me tell you, uh, salvation you know, is a decision. People will make you feel like you gotta be running around speaking in tongues and feeling all these goosebumps. That's, that's not how it works. Salvation is a decision. Sometimes those things will happen simultaneously. Sometimes you will speak in tongues. Sometimes you will run. That's right. But then that's not a requirement. He said if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for the remission of your sins. He said if you believe that, if you believe that you are a sinner, but if you believe that his father raised him from the dead, and that if you ask him, he forgives you of your sins. He said if you believe this, then thou shalt be saved. So if you're here today, when you come, if you're watching us on live or Facebook, when you come today, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, come on now, come on. Oh, he wants to 
want you to do is be honest. Yeah. Yeah. And if you desire prayer this morning, I mean, you really desire God to do something in your life. I'm trusting God with you. Yeah. If it's deliverance that you need, come. Yeah. If it's somebody in your family that you need saved, come. Yeah. If it's a child that's gone wayward, come. Yeah. If it's a parent that's on their sick bed, come. It could be you. It could be you who, who just need an answer from God. Yeah. Let us not take this moment lightly. Let me tell you something about the altar. The altar is a good place to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wherever you are, God said you should establish an altar. Your altar in your home could be your kitchen. It could be your shower. Your car, for me, it's my car. That's my sanctuary. That's my altar. Where it is, and you can go and meet God. I wouldn't understand when I would watch my mom looking out the window, and she would just be staring. The water would be running, but she wasn't doing anything. And I realized that was her altar. That's where she would commune with God. And she wouldn't be saying a word. But can I tell you, the altar is a place where things have to die. Things have to die at the altar. But not only will things die at the altar, things can also live. I feel somebody's spirit. I don't know who it is at this moment. And somebody is truly hurting. I mean, really hurting. And I just want you to know that God says, I see you. Yeah. And I'm going to answer your prayer. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have to wait long. Yes, no. Just trust me and believe that I'm going to answer your Glory prayer. Yeah. Let us pray. Gracious, kind, marvelous, yeah. and miraculous yes, God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The great I am. Yeah. The wheel in the middle of the wheel. The bright and morning star. The one who sits high and looks low. Jehovah Jireh, God, our provider. God, you are the one who allow us to have our being. You are the one who are the present help in the time of trouble. You are the one who stepped in and tell them to stand back and behave. You are the one that told us that all sickness is not unto death. You're the one who said we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. You're the one who told us that we are more than conquerors. You told us that we are the head and not the tail. That we are above and not beneath. You told us that the last shall be first and the first shall be last. So that's the God we're calling on today, the one that allowed Moses to stretch out his rod and to divide the Red Sea. We're calling on you, the one who saved many and brought them out of the land of Egypt. Today, oh God, here we are in this middle spot, oh God. First, asking you to forgive us of our sins. Forgive us, God. We have done stuff that was not pleasing in your sight. We've said things, we've gone places, we've done things, oh God, that you are not pleased with, but still you love us. And God, we want to say thank you. But Father, here we are, we're lifting up our hands. Surrendering it all to you, oh God. Every hurt, every pain, every misconception, every bad thought, every bad feeling, every past situation. Oh my God.
attention at the same time. Yes, so, Father, I offer every person who is under the sound of my voice. Yes, God. For whatever the need is, God.
she would give her Holy Ghost boldness right now. That she will no longer be afraid to open her mouth and speak what you tell her. God, give her clarity. Let her know, oh God, if you told her, she can speak it in the name of Jesus. I pray right now, oh God, that the next time you tell her to do it, it shall be done. And Father God, I pray for this sister right now. Father, the anointing that you placed on her life. The ministry that you have on the inside of her. For women who have been broken, who have been hurt, who have been left, who have been put to the side. God, you let her go through what she went through because there are people waiting on her. There are women waiting on her voice. There are women waiting on her hands. And I pray right now you give her Holy Ghost moments that she will not stand in the background any longer. That she will not ride the coattails of anybody else any longer. That she will do what you call her to do. In the mighty name of Let the redeem of the Lord say amen. Amen.